Well, hello, everyone. Um, I see that it's 2 o'clock, so I think we'll get going. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Um, we're excited to be having this opportunity to be speaking with members of the New Jersey YMCA State Alliance about Food Day. Um, I just want to mention before we get going here that as soon as possible following the webinar, uh, these slides, as well as the recording of today's webinar, will be sent to all registrants via email. Um, so no need to be taking notes on anything on the slides or anything that's being said, because that will be made available to you. And also just a quick mention before we get going about using GoToWebinar. Uh, GoToWebinar is a platform that uh, you have all entered onto. And um, if you have any questions, and we hope you do, uh, during the presentation, there is a question box on your dashboard. And you can enter any questions you have in there, and we'll address them at the end. Um, there's also a fun function on this webinar platform where you can raise your hand. Um, and we'd love to hear from you, for you to introduce yourself and share your thoughts. So if you want to speak, um, which we would love, if you click the raise hand button on your dashboard, um, we can unmute you and make that option available. And then just another note that the webinar is being recorded and slides in the recording will be shared um, after the webinar. And we would very much encourage you to share the slides in recording with anyone that's not able to make the webinar that you think might be interested in learning more about Food Day and getting involved. So here's just a quick agenda. Um, we'll start with a welcome and introduction from Bill Lovett. And Bill, uh, if you're there, um, anytime. Great. Well, and thanks for everybody for being on. And um, you know, we debated whether to hold this webinar in the fall, but thought we wanted to give all of you enough advance notice. and. Uh, and so we appreciate those of you that were able to come on today. Um, so you know, if you think about it, if we were going to do this webinar five or six years ago, I think most of us, including me, would have been a little, more, little bit more lost as we sort of think about what the wise role can be with an event like Food Day. But now it's five or six years later, and we have 60,000 kids a day in Healthy You. And so many of you are doing great work with community gardens, farmers markets, breakfast in the classroom. Uh, many of you are working with the corner stores to bring healthy uh, produce uh, into many of the communities. A lot of you have done tremendous work with your own internal standards and wellness policies, and many of you are working with schools on their nutritional wellness policies. So I think this is now an arena where, uh, as compared to five or six years ago, we're much more comfortable. And I think you guys are realizing the kind of impact you can have on the communities you're working with. And so the um, Center for, the, for Science and the Public Interest is sort of one of these organizations that we keep interacting with and they're doing some great work uh, from an advocacy point of view and from a knowledge point of view about this issue. And so they have organized uh, an event called Food Day that you're going to hear about. And what we're recommending and what we'll be um, working with you on is we made a decision yesterday that we're going to do our Healthy You Recommitment launch day on October 24th and tie it into Food Day. And it'll be a great opportunity for you all with local events to involve your elected officials and educators, community leaders, and celebrate a lot of the work that we're doing, but also keep raising the awareness in your communities about the importance of this issue. Because as we all know, and Emily and I were just talking about this, is that although physical activity is important and you guys are doing tremendous work with Healthy You and your other programs in this area, we all understand that we've managed to create an environment, especially for children, that where what they're eating and what they have access to isn't where we need our communities to be. And so I think the wise are in a unique position to really do something important with this. We'll be following up with you with more information on how to tie this event in to our, our Healthy You kickoff on October 24th. But I think it will be a great opportunity to really celebrate what you're doing locally and we'll all do it on the same day, which I think is going to really help us generate uh, tremendous press coverage. And then we'll allow the Center for the Science and the Public Interest to point to New Jersey as we're the first state uh, alliance of YMCA's that is really getting behind this and working to really raise awareness in our community. So I don't want to steal Emily Sunder. She's got a great presentation for you. I'll come on at the end as well. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And then uh, we appreciate everyone taking the time today. So I'm ready to floor yours. Thanks very much, Bill. Um, and you know, what Bill said also um, is definitely right that New Jersey is really one of the first states 
um, you know, the YMCA Alliance to really um, be getting very involved in food day. So we're very excited about the opportunity as we think the work aligns very well. Um, but to just continue with an overview, um, I will do a short presentation, um, maybe 20, 25 minutes, talking a bit about food day and the opportunities and the resources that we provide. Um, and then we'll have some time for questions and some discussion. And as Bill said, he'll hop on too. And we want to hear from you, um, your thoughts, your ideas, your reactions. Um, you know, I'm hoping to learn from you all as well. And then also, I just wanted to include my contact information here um, so that you'll have it in the slides. Uh, my name is Emily Karras. I'm a dietitian by training. Um, I work as a Food Day Project Coordinator. And what that means is that I um, am located at our National Food Day office in D.C. And I work with a number of states, um, individuals and organizations, schools, um, a bunch of groups in a number of states on food day organizing, host, hosting webinars, sharing information, um, providing resources, brainstorming. So uh, by all means, if you have questions or want to brainstorm or are looking for a resource that you can't find, please do email or call me anytime. I am very happy to help, and that's what we're here for. Um, and also, I have just included here uh, food days on social media, and social media has become such a huge way to get in touch with our communities and um, you know, it also is such a national platform these days, and I just wanted to share our Twitter handle is at Food Day 2014, and the hashtag that's going to be used on a nationwide basis, basis this year is hashtag Food Day 2014, and if you guys are on Twitter, we'd certainly love for you to join the conversation. Last year, there were 20, 28 million possible impressions of hashtag Food Day 2013 on Twitter, so certainly a lot going on on social media. Um, also, a link here to our Facebook page where we're um, often providing updates, sharing resources, um, so another good resource to check out. And then our website where we house most of our most of our resources, um, foodday.org. So just a little bit of an overview about Food Day. And one of the easiest ways to think about Food Day is like an Earth Day for the food movement. Um, food Day was started in 2011, so this will be the fourth year. And it's a day that's meant, for, uh, meant to be used for Americans to prove, improve our diets and push toward better food policies. Um, it's very celebratory and inclusive in nature. Um, it happens on October 24th every year. And there are thousands of events all around the country on October 24th. Um, and they bring Americans together to celebrate and enjoy real food and to push for improved food policies. And it's a day to resolve to make changes in our own diet and also to take action to solve food-related problems in our own communities. And this can be done often, at, often with Food Day at the local and state level, but also at the national level. Just a few highlights here from Food Day last year. There were 4,700 events and activities taking place around the country in celebration or in honor of Food Day. And those are the events that we hear about. Of course, we love to hear about everything you're doing, but um, know that we probably don't. Uh, and that's twice as many as in the first year of Food Day, which was in 2011, when there were about 2,300 events happening around the country. Another highlight from last year was uh, that singer-songwriter Jack Johnson supported Food Day on tour. And he's continued to do that this year. And in that capacity, he allows Food Day organizers across the country to have tables at his concerts to share information um, about Food Day with the community and also to learn from the community that comes to the concerts what projects they're working on and how they might be able to get involved. Jack Johnson has also been matching donations made to Food Day from now until September 1, so he's proved to be a really wonderful partner, um, a good example of a singer doing good for, for the country and for communities across the country. Another highlight from last year was the Big Apple Crunch. And this is something that happened throughout the state of New York, but also uh, very concentrated in New York City. And this was an event that was backed by the city of New York and Mayor Bloomberg, with, and also a nonprofit called Grow NYC. And the Big Apple Crunch is when uh, New Yorkers are crunching into an apple on food day, a local apple. So uh, local, local food providers across New York donated apples to 
uh, schools and to community centers and you know, a huge group of different people that wanted to be involved and everyone was crunching into an apple. And last year, Grow NYC, the nonprofit I mentioned, tracked all the people that were participating. Uh, they found out as many locations as they could and then how many people at each location would be crunching into an apple. And they reached one million people and broke a record. I think they're in the, in the record book now for the most people crunching into an apple at the same time. So that's just an example of a nice way um, a fun and relatively easy way that we can celebrate and raise awareness for healthy eating. And there are several areas that have put their own spin on the Big Apple Crunch. For example, last year in New Orleans, they had the Big Easy Satsuma Peel. Satsumas are a local fruit in New Orleans, and they had school children peeling into Satsumas and sort of racing to see who could peel them first and then, of course, eating them. And in Florida, they had an orange challenge where they were challenging as many schools and wives and uh, community centers to offer oranges or put oranges on the school meal tray during uh, during the day of food day so that kids could be taking part in this orange challenge. Another highlight from last year was a food literacy quiz that was launched on the food day website. And this is a fun, easy 15 question quiz that really raises the question of how food literate are we. It, ha it has beautiful images. It's still up there now. If anyone would like to use the quiz, in any of the food day events that they may have or just as in, are interested in taking it for yourself, shoot me over an email and I can show you where it's located on our website. And then food day is possible every year thanks to hundreds of local volunteer coordinators and thousands of event hosts like you all on the phone. So uh, thanks very much for your support of food day. Uh, there are several volunteer coordinators throughout New Jersey and I'm sure that they would be happy to uh, chat and provide resources and share what's worked for them in the past. So if you're interested in that, I can provide their contact information as well. Those are all volunteers. And then for Food Day 2014, there are two major focus areas. However, that being said, food day events can take all forms um, and certainly don't have to be about one of the focus areas. But for folks that are looking for an area to focus in on, um, the two themes this year are food education and food literacy, which is a continuing theme from last year. We believe that all children should have the right to basic food knowledge and learn basic cooking skills so that they can lead happy and healthy lives. Um, and then the second theme, which is new this year, is food justice. And that's food justice in a very broad sense, from food access and equality to junk food marketing unfairly targeted at children to justice for food and farm workers. And here are some photos of some food education themed events that happened across the country last year. And we'd encourage everyone to send photos from your food day events. It's so fun for us to see all the things that are happening. Um, and it's also great to take pictures at the events because they do create beautiful images that you can use later in reports or on your website or um, you know, in funding inquiries or whatever, whatever you might use them for. Up in the left-hand corner is a picture at the Orange Challenge in Florida. So uh, this school made signs where the kids could write their names and hold them up and see that they participated. And uh, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a story time. Um, looks like a beautiful day in that location. In the bottom, actually both of the bottom pictures are a school in Hawaii who participated in Food Day with a great big event for 650 kids at their school where they were giving out local melon slices and also the kids had a chance to take uh, part in a cooking demonstration. Uh, Food Day also has many partner organizations across the country um, that, that share resources, that organize with their local chapters, and I've just put a few up on this board. Um, National Farm to School Network has been very involved, the American Public Health Association, Cooking Matters at the Store Tours are often held on Food Day. That's a program run out of Share Our Strengths, and it um, takes, takes families around the grocery store and shows how to shop at the grocery store. Um, and I think oftentimes there are incentives like $10 grocery store coupons offered um, for Cooking Matters tours. Jamie Oliver Food Foundation USA has been a partner. And with, with Jamie Oliver Food Foundation USA, last year we uh, launched a Get Food Education in Every School initiative and have many food education resources. Uh, another partner is the National PTA the National WIC Association, and Youth Service America. We also have a number of state and local partners um, 
And all of that to say that Food Day is very inclusive and celebratory, and the key is participation. We want everyone to get involved and be celebrating um, and pushing to a better food system. We also have an advisory board. We're very lucky to have two co-chairs, Senator Tom Harkin and Representative Rosa DeLauro. We also have about you know, 50 or 60 other advisory board members who have been very supportive of Food Day and able to make Food Day um, really, really wonderful in, in its early years and continue to make Food Day really wonderful. Um, here's a list here. I don't need to go through them, but we also have a link on our website to the rest of the advisory board if anyone is interested in taking a look. So Food Day as a why. So I put together this slide here um, as sort of a general slide about Food Day as a why. Um, and a lot of this is taken from, including the quote at the bottom, there's a why here in D.C. that celebrated Food Day in a really big way last year with a Food Day festival. And they've told us that it aligns really well with the mission of healthy eating and social responsibility in the community. And that through Food Day, they were able to focus on food intake, but also to raise awareness about food access accessibility in our communities. They found Food Day to be a really fun and informational event for parents and kids. So Food Day events can um, involve both, both parents and kids and actually is a really wonderful opportunity to, uh, to work with both groups, the parents and the kids, um, and certainly fun. We hope all Food Day events are fun and can be informational. They were able to provide new and fresh ideas about healthy eating. And we have some resources on the Food Day website that can make that easy for you. And then also, Food Day can create exposure for the work you're doing. So there's a lot of ways that Food Day can highlight the work that you do year round. I know when I spoke with Bill, he told me about the um, really great things that are happening at the WISE across the state um, year round. So we hope Food Day can be a day for you to get a little bit of extra attention. Um, and we have some ways that we can help, help you do that. We have a national blog where we can share information about the Food Day related work, but other work throughout the year that you're doing. Um, we also have, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, social media where we can publicize your work. We have a national food day map where you can register your involvement in food day, be it an event or an activity or um, you know, programming that you already have planned that you're tying in with food day. And on that map, there's a zip code search for our community members and media. Uh, you know, type in their zip codes and find out what's happening in the community. So we really hope that food day can be a nice way to create exposure for the work you have going year round. And then I'll just read this nice quote that came from the Y here in DC. Um, they said that by dedicating an entire day to food and building more conversations around food, we can create healthy and sustainable communities. And that was, that's what the Y is all about. So um, that was a nice quote that they shared. So some ideas for what you might do for a food day. Um, you could incorporate Food Day into your planned October programming. So if you already have some great festivals or events happening or you already have after school, you know, cooking lessons or something, you can plan, you can incorporate Food Day right in. Sometimes just letting the kids or families or parents that are there know it's Food Day is a nice way to celebrate. Um, another idea, and this is something that WISE have done, is to either start or announce plans to start a garden. And if you already have one, to have a harvest day, um, opening up to, to parents and kids to come in. Uh, nutrition education activities is a great way to uh, celebrate Food Day. And we have a Food Day school curriculum. And that can certainly be used outside of the classroom as well. It has five lessons. They can be taught in sequence or they can be taught standalone. And I've actually used the curriculum in a number of settings. And it's very adaptable. I went to recently a huge um, Global Youth Service Day on the National Mall in April and took some of the lessons out of there and, and made it into a service activity for kids that were attending that event. Um, you could invite a special guest in. Uh, you could have a local chef come in to talk, a farmer or a gardener, you know, really teaching people where does our food come from. You know, apples don't come from the grocery store type of thing, and who better to talk about that than a farmer or gardener. Um, others have invited in a nutrition expert, and this can be especially effective for, it can be very effective for kids, but especially effective for parents. Um, last year there was a library in Maine that invited a nutrition expert into a library to give a session to parents about healthy snacks and just some simple ways to prepare healthy snacks for their kids that are affordable and healthy. And they all, she also provided handouts that the parents could take home to make it easy. 
Another thing that WISE have done is host a run walk, a 5K or a 3K, um, and that can take any form. And you know, some of these events have had a finish line with healthy snacks or a finish line with local food local food businesses, local food vendors, farmers, um, a variety of things at the end of that. You could have a film screening. You could have a story time, like that picture that was shown in a previous slide with a, with a food-related book um, or a book discussion. And we have a suggested reading list for food day that can be used to help get ideas for what books you might read. And also a film screening guide with many films in it from many different audiences of, of films that would be good to share at a film screening for food day. Um, there's lots of opportunities for corner stores and farmers markets to get involved in food day. And I know Bill mentioned that many of you work with corner stores and farmers markets. And we actually have a lot of specific resources for things that farmers markets can do. Um, and also some examples of corner store activities for food day. We keep learning of more and more um, healthy corner store initiatives that are incorporating food day into their into their store. And then the last idea is to have some kind of special food day festival. And here over on the side, I've put some pictures of some of our resources where you can get more ideas for what you might do. The Food Day 2013 campaign report is a really nice, I think about 20 page guide of, uh, or snapshot of some of the nearly 5,000 events that happened around the country last year for Food Day. So certainly no need to reinvent the wheel. There's lots of great ideas out there. Um, of course, always new ideas are exciting and definitely welcome. We also have a guide for organizers that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a little bit. Um, and this is the DC event that happened last year. So the YMCA was Anthony Bowen. And um, over on the right, this is their advertisement for their Food Day event on their website. And they had a festival for Food Day on their terrace. And they had a number of stations. One was called Dinners in Disguise. And it was a taste test station that included, included a week's menu for parents. They had edible arts and crafts. And I actually just heard um, about in Mississippi last year another edible arts and crafts event um, that went on. So I think that idea is really fun. They had a Rethink Your Drink event, um, teaching kids about how much added sugar is in drinks. And we certainly have lots of resources if you're interested to do something around uh, around rethinking your drink and sharing with people how much sugar is in some of the beverages, not just soda, but juice that we're drinking. Uh, a food scavenger hunt's fun. And this is actually a great thing for a farmer's market. Last year, I was at a farmer's market where they had a food day scavenger hunt. And while the parents were shopping, the kids were going around naming three vegetables and naming one farmer and um, learning about new things through the scavenger hunt. They also had an apple crunch, so the idea spread out of New York, certainly. And the apples for this apple crunch were donated by a local food business across the street that wanted to support the activity at the Y. And they also had cooking demos from a local chef that focuses on healthy eating with kids. So some resources to help you plan. So the guide for organizers that I mentioned uh, was created before I, jo I joined the Food Day team. And it's a really awesome resource that takes you through just thinking about having a food day event all the way through carrying one out. It has a checklist for a great food day. It has food day talking points that you can use. Um, so you don't need to do any kind of research if you want to make an announcement on food day or share healthy tid uh, share tidbits. You can use those talking points. It has ideas for who you might partner with in your community to pull off a food day event or festival or run walk. It has many more event and activity ideas. And it also has a section called events in a box. Um, that all just being so that you don't need to start at square one and reinvent the wheel. But there's lots of ideas already out there. It has a planning timeline. And, and I should say this is a very ideal situation planning timeline. Certainly many groups. Um, are not following the timeline exactly. Um, there's information in there about registering, registering your event on the national map. And that's what I mentioned earlier, where you can put a pin on the national map so that community members, when they type in their zip code, can find out about what you're doing. And this is also how we're able to track all the activity that's happening around the country. So we would encourage you all to register your events. There's information in here about media and publicity. Um, we have sample media advisories and sample press releases. And maybe, you know, if there's a lot of participation from the WISE across the state, there could be a joint 
an opportunity to do a joint press release of some type. There's also information in there about fundraising. One of the best ways that people have um, had sponsorship through Food Day events is through in-kind donations from local food businesses and local Whole Foods, but also there's some other ideas for fundraising. Um, as I mentioned, we have a film screening guide, and it's not just a list of films, but it teaches what you need to do to have a film screening in the community. Um, and also, in, I should say, in the film screening guide, there are discount offers for food day events for film screenings um, to make it more affordable to have a film screening as well. There's a food day suggested reading list, as I mentioned. This has books for adults, for kids. It has cookbooks and um, all, all sorts of books. Uh, we have a number of one-pagers, and two of these are here on, on the side and that are pictured. One is the general food day one-pager. It talks about what is food day, why food day, what are some ideas of things that I could do? And then another one that I put up here, although we have many others on our website, um, are some recommended nutrition guidelines for food day. Um, you can have whatever type of food you want at your food day event, but since food day is a celebration for healthy food, um, we just provided some guidelines that you might consider. And then we also uh, have, have worked with a lot of groups who have decided, you know, October 24th is pretty close to Halloween. I want to have a healthy Halloween event for Food Day. So we've worked together with Disney to put together a healthy Halloween kit um, that's available also. We have promotional materials that we'd love for you to use. One is the Food Day poster, and I pictured that here. The 2014 poster has just come out, and we will be ordering print posters this year that we can send to you. Um, so let us know if you want any of those. We also have Food Day logos, and I put one here, and we would love for you to use, and please do feel free to use the Food Day logo on any of your materials to help with promotion. Um, schools sometimes put the Food Day logo on the menu during October. People use it in flyers. Um, it can be used, you know, people make t-shirts sometimes for the run walk. Um, so please use that. We also will be having a brochure this year. It's not quite out, but it's very close um, that can be used and shared with people in the community. As I mentioned, the national map is a great way to promote uh, your your events both to the community and to media if you want media and also there is a way to register on the national map for private events. So if you're having an event that is not open to the public, um, certainly most school events are not open to the public, we still would encourage you to register so that we know about what's going on around the country but um, you can do that privately so that it won't appear on the map. Uh, we have a media guide and with that is a sample press release and a sample media advisory. And you know, if, if um, we, we also put out like a national food day press release and some national communications. So please do keep us informed of what you're planning to do because there's all kinds of opportunities to be highlighted around food day uh, for the work that you're doing year round. And recipes. So what would food day be without some great food? We have several free recipe resources. One of those is the Eat Real Recipe Booklet. And that's recipes from some celebrity chefs. And many of them have been tailored with the chefs to make them healthier than they might typically be. And last year, we released this 20 Recipes to Get Kids Cooking cookbook. And the idea there is that if kids know how to cook 20 recipes, um, that are outlined in this book, they'll you know know how to cook and live a healthy life. Live a healthy life, and if they can learn learn that as children, they'll be able to carry it into their adult life. I know when I was in school, I didn't learn how to cook, so I had to teach myself as an adult. Um, so this is a nice resource to share with the kids. Um, and we also have recipe cards. So that's what's in the middle here, and there are four recipe cards that can be. Um, they're sort of like pocket or wallet sized, and they can be handed out at events. You could cook them at events. They're all simple and healthy um, and great for sharing. We also have other recipes on our website, too. I just wanted to highlight a couple. We have many nutrition education resources if you're interested in using them. The Food Day School curriculum I mentioned earlier, there's five lessons. They can be taught in sequence or standalone. It's really great. It was uh, created by professors at Columbia University Teachers College during the first year of Food Day in 2011. Um, you can see pictured here, I put up a picture of lesson one, which is Eat Real. The, the curriculum's great. It has all the visuals you need, so you just have to print and cut them out. It has you know, everything you need for those, um, to teach those lessons. Last year, we worked together with Chop Chop Magazine, which is, if, if you're not familiar with Chop Chop, it's a really great magazine for kids 
um, and we worked with them to put out a nutrition toolkit. And one page of that toolkit is featured here, how to read a nutrition label. Um, and it's a good, I know the label's changing soon, uh, so we'll have to update this, but currently this is the same label. So um, this is a great resource and it's very kid friendly. And we have those available on our website for free too. That you can, everything's free that we have. I should have mentioned that earlier, but um, that's a nice resource to share. We also have a number of infographics, and we'll be coming out with more. And I've put up the one here on children's diets. It's just a nice visual way to share about, um, you know, sort of how we're doing in America um, on the food system. And we're coming out with a few at sustainable agriculture animal welfare ones, so we'll have a variety if you want to use them in any of your food day activities. And we have fact sheets that, you know, can get you up to speed on some of the issues if you're interested, um, and th those are also available on our website. So that's all I had prepared to talk about, um, and I'd love to, you know, if anyone has questions or would like to share ideas, I'd love to have a discussion and hear from you. Um, if you have questions, you can type them into the question box. Um, and I can answer them, or if you'd like to raise your hand, we'd love for you to introduce yourself and, um, you know, if you have any thoughts or anything like that. So let me ask a question, it's Bill. Um, if people would like to get materials, should they just email you directly, Emily, or? Yeah, definitely. And I can either provide you links to the resources if you have access to a printer, um, or I would be happy to, we, we do have the capacity to send some things print. Of course, we can't send thousands of things, unfortunately, because we don't have the budget for it. But um, I can certainly send as many as I can. Great. Thanks. Uh, that's a great question, and you know, we hope you'll use our resources. They're all free. They're all meant to be helpful to you. Um, I see that Rose has raised her hand. So, Rose, I'm going to unmute you, and we'd love to hear from you. Okay, Rose, I've unmuted you. Rose, are you there? Okay, maybe maybe the hand was raised in a mistake. Um, is there anyone else that has any questions or wants to share with the group? Has anyone on the call participated? Oh, I see another hand has been raised. Um, oh, Rose, raise your hand again. Here, okay, Rose, I've unmuted you. And this is why I hate technology. <laughs> I know. These webinars always have problems. But Rose, I think I know the issue. And I think maybe you've muted yourself. So I've unmuted you. And I think you need to unmute yourself as well. Oh, there you go. Rose, you should be all set to talk if you want to share something. OK, well, it seems like there might be some technical difficulties. But um, th does okay. anyone else have any questions? Uh, this is Bill. And I think if anyone does have questions, obviously they can reach out to you directly to Emily or also email me, and we'll make sure we get an answer. And uh, and just to sort of connect a few of the other dots, we'll be asking our marketing um, group as well as our Healthy Youth uh, team of Sue and Marla to, to uh, put materials together. And Emily, they'll probably be back in touch with you to help coordinate some of this. And I guess what I, you know, uh, it's nice that we have 30, um, I think we have 30 wise on this call, but it, what I'd say is that uh, if we all sort of pull together on October 24th, I think we've got the opportunity to really have this be an event that is similar in, in impact to our Healthy Kids Day in the spring and a great chance to highlight the work you're doing. So, um, and Emily, it, it, it'll be fun getting in trouble with you. And it's always, uh, uh, you guys have done great work. And, and we're glad to have you as a partner. 
Well, thanks very much. And you know, it doesn't look like anyone has any questions right now. Um, but yes, Bill's absolutely right. You have my contact information. Anything that I can do to help, um, please give me a call or shoot me an email. Um, and we can certainly help to promote as much as we can the things that you're doing. So I want to thank you all again for joining. Um, there are over 30 wives in representation on the call today. So thank you very much. I'm very appreciative. And I'll send around these slides and also a recording in case that's helpful. Um, and look forward to being in touch with many of you this fall. So thanks very much for joining. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.